Walls are one of the most interesting structures in the game. A max level wall has the most health out of any other structure in the game and upgrading your walls is by far the most expensive part about upgrading your base, which means they must be important right? Well, against air armies, the walls just become completely useless. And there are also quite a lot of ground troops that can just skip the walls as well. And this makes you question why you even bother upgrading them. But if you don't, then people with standard ground armies can easily destroy your base as well because you have weak walls. And with how the game has evolved over the years, the walls have become one of the most problematic things in the game for both Supercell and the players. And today, we're going to be going over the history of the walls to see how they became so problematic since in the early days they were perfectly balanced. Obviously walls were around when the game first came out and there was one level for each town hall level meaning there were eight total levels. And for the super early town hall levels the walls just didn't really matter much because they couldn't even protect your whole village because there just weren't enough walls to surround any meaningful structure in your base. And even if you surrounded something it still wasn't big enough which let archers just shoot everything inside. But it would be at around tunnels 4 and 5 that walls would actually start to play a role. And they played quite a big role as there were way more ground troops and attack strategies in the game compared to air attacks. Which there really was only the balloon. But even at tunnel 4 the balloons really showed how OP air troops could be. Since the balloons being able to bypass the walls are really OP at tunnel 4 due to there not being any real good counter counters for troops that could just skip the walls. And these walls really were the best defense at the lower tunnel levels because the troops just weren't all that strong enough to deal with them and an opponent would have to bring wall breakers if they wanted to have a chance of destroying your base just because of how effective the walls were against troops like the giants or barbarians. But once you got to tunnel 7, that's when you would really start facing the dilemma about whether or not you should focus on your walls because of the dragons. They were an air troop and that obviously meant they could fly over the walls. And it was with the unlocking of dragons that you really got the first real air army in the game, which was a combination of the dragons and balloons. This was a strong enough army that you didn't really even need any ground troops, meaning this was an army that wasn't affected with walls, so there's no difference between a level 1 wall and a level 7 wall when you were using the dragons. And this was really what made the walls start being problematic because on one hand they were just completely useless and on the other hand they were extremely useful against the ground attacks. But when the Dark Lister troops came out, the Hog Riders were also introduced. And they were the first of multiple ground troops that could also avoid the walls entirely. Plus there was also the jump spell that was added. And this basically meant that any troop in the game could jump over walls. So at this stage in the game, walls were starting to become extremely difficult to balance and deal with. There were now a ton more counters for the walls, which were once arguably considered to be the most important defense. But the biggest thing about the walls was their health and cost. Walls have the most health out of any other building in the game and each piece is also pretty expensive. In fact, for a majority of town halls, it costs more to upgrade all your walls than it costs to upgrade every single other building in the village, which is just insane considering people can completely bypass them super easily with air troops and some ground troops. Supercell did try to balance it out a little bit in September of 2014 by making it so you could upgrade walls to level 6 and higher by using Elixir since in the past you could only use gold. Two months later they would nerf it a little bit so that the minimum level to upgrade using Elixir would be level 8 but it was still an effort by Supercell to encourage players to try and upgrade their walls and focus on them a little bit more since you could clearly see people starting to neglect walls or just making them an afterthought past Town Hall 7. And Supercell would also regularly add more walls into the game at almost every Town Hall level to try and make them more important by making players come up with different designs that could protect more things on the inside of their bases. But realistically, this just brought in so much more work for the players since they now had a bunch more walls to try and upgrade. But 
other than just adding the option to upgrade with the lecture, Supercell also added the Lava Hound in the same month, which was basically another massive nerf for the walls and another reason for players to not really bother upgrading them. This is because the Lava Loon strategy was created, which is arguably one of the most popular and powerful attacking strategies in the game, and it does a full air attack, meaning walls obviously didn't matter. This attack really took over the game past Town Hall 9, and Supercell didn't really know what to do with the walls. The game kind of just stayed in this place where people were prioritizing everything except for the walls and other ground defenses since the two biggest armies in the game were the Lava Loon and Drag Loon strategies. The only purpose the walls really had were to slow down the heroes since the king and queen obviously couldn't jump walls or anything. But to be honest you didn't really even need them in these attacks so it wasn't even crucial to deploy them in battle. But in December of 2015 Supercell added 10 11 which meant the Grand Warden was in the game and this meant that now there were even heroes that could skip the walls as well which really just made them even worse and less important especially because how much the Grand Warden helped the air attacks with his aura and special ability but it would really be the Tunnel 12 update that was arguably one of the worst for the walls because it introduced the Electro Dragon and Siege Machines Obviously, I've talked about the Electro Dragon a bunch on this channel and I'm sure most of you already know how much it is used, so I'm not going to bother going into them, but I do want to talk about the Siege Machines. The first one was literally called the Wall Wrecker and obviously it destroyed walls. This kind of took the role of a wall breaker in some cases for ground armies, as now you had a new thing that didn't take up any housing space in your army and it was a good way to direct your troops right through the walls. And it wasn't even limited to just the ground troops since they could also be useful for your king and queen which helped them get into the core of the base as well if you were using an air army which is what most people were using at the time. Supercell ended up introducing magic items and more specifically wall rings which also try and encourage players to upgrade their walls, which people obviously did using the wall rings since you couldn't do anything else with them. But overall, the game was really in a state where air armies dominated the higher tunnel levels and the walls didn't matter as much, despite being more expensive than ever and having so much health. However, things would start changing around tunnels 13 and 14. The game started becoming a little bit harder for air attacks, with 3 stars becoming less common at these tunnel levels. And this obviously led to an emergence in more ground attacks, meaning walls were becoming more important again. And between March of 2020 and April of 2021, the cost to upgrade walls was reduced, with the numbers being a million less for levels 12 and 13, which was a very big difference. And the wall rings required for some levels had also been reduced, which made it easier for people to upgrade their walls. And one big reason for this was Town of 14, which also brought with it the level 15 walls. And at this level, these walls were really strong and you actually really needed to worry about them with ground attacks since they could slow down a lot of ground troops. And the same walls for Town of 15, which was even harder for both air and ground attacks. And due to the walls being so strong and air attacks being a little less popular and viable, players had to come up with something new since now it seemed like walls were too strong compared to just a few town halls ago where they basically didn't matter. And well this created the hybrid attack which is the most popular strategy for town halls 14 and 15. This strategy combined the miners and hog riders which are both ground troops that can avoid walls by either jumping over them or mining under them. So yeah this is really a big reason why walls are so problematic in the game. They have the most health and are really effective against most ground troops but the best ones can literally just ignore them and all air troops obviously don't have to worry about them either and the walls are the most expensive things to upgrade which makes them a grind to max out and if you don't then that will make your base a lot easier to raid with ground troops and if you do max them out they can still just be ignored by a bunch of different armies and Supercell hasn't really been able to find a way to balance them out other than trying to make them somewhat cheaper and this overall just makes them the most problematic structure in the game. 